This is what I spent yesterday building. Nice place to put all the ham radio equipment. Everything works and works well, except this KWM1 that I still have to go through. I do have a power supply for that, but I'm going to have to rebuild it. That, that's our camshack. And then our test equipment. Going through to the workbench. And this is the power supply for the KWM 2A that I need to go through. I have a regular uh, 516F1, but uh, I want to get this going because it takes up less room and just sticks in the back of it and goes to town. Doesn't let you have as much output power, but I do have room on the back side of this to install that if I want to because it doesn't have a cabinet, so it's kind of smaller than normal. On the side here, I got my antenna switch that lets me switch, not for antennas, but different radios. The R725 here, and the R390A are both connected on the same wire antenna to the 200V transmitter. So I could use either one of these with that. And then, of course, the S-Line, 32S1, 75S1, 30L1 amplifier, which I have two. I just don't have a place to put it yet unless I get rid of one of the two cam woods or maybe put it up there where the, 75, or the KWM1's at. And then the 75A1, which works really well. This speaker, the 270G2, is actually connected to these because this has the transformer in it that goes from 600 ohms to four ohms for the speaker in that. And the 270, 270G1 is connected to the 75A4. The KWM2A would use the speaker that's in the small power supply here. So the speaker's taken care of there. And then if I wanted to run these, the TS820 or the TS830, they got their own built-in speakers, so that's not a problem. And then, oh, wait a minute, hold on, I'm wrong. This speaker is connected to the 75A1. The speaker that's in here is connected to the 75A4. That's right, I did it that way. And then this is my antenna switch and output meter. There's our dipole, or there's the vertical. There's the dipole, power spider on this, and the LED lights. And then for test equipment, we got nice this nice big rack here with another R398 at the bottom. All the way up there. Bunches of plug-ins for the 560s and the 500 series. The little ones are for the 564, 565, and the 561A. That's these guys here. And then the big ones down here are for the 556. 545 and then I've got a 585 over there that came in this big box, but the tube busted so I got to get a new tube for it, which is on the way And yeah general craziness Messy bench that I just got cleaned off because I moved this drafting table from over here and Put the desk from that was over here over here because this can hold a lot more weight than this can and this is actually bowing down It's a half an inch shorter in the middle than it is on the sides So I Figured I won't have as much weight on the middle of this bench at any time compared to this which is more permanent so everything just kind of Swapped around and this will hold a lot more which obviously, you know, there's about well, Let's see 80, 80, 80, 60, 35. These probably all weigh about together, maybe close to 100 pounds. 
and stuff on top is probably about the same way, about close to 100 pounds. So, yeah, several hundred pounds there, but this is all pine, 18 inches deep, four foot tall. Worked out pretty good. Cost me a little under 200 bucks to put it all together with the price of the wood, the screws, the glue. And I built it yesterday afternoon and got her done. So don't think I'm going to finish it. I kind of like the way it looks without finish on it. But there we go. Ham shack, workbench, test equipment. 575 tra curve tracers out the yin yang. Got three of those, so. And they all work. Work pretty well. Back there is my little Type 130 LC meter and my senior volt ohmless volt meter. Volt ohm meter. And I got Tektronix power supply, an HP 5326V voltmeter and counter. The Type 75A power test set, which is really, really handy for testing this old stuff. And there's our curve tracer up and going. Switch it between the two. Beautiful. Great quality equipment. And our paste to soldering station that I repainted with Tektronix Blue, so. I just like that color, it matches everything. And there's my soldering iron, which is a Paco F FX951. Very handy, lovely little thing. And my cool little $20 cobalt toolbox. I bought it at Lowe's, 20 bucks on it, was neat. Good place for my pliers and such. Extra capacitors and resistors more resistors over there screwdriver rack bolt meters just about everything everything you need to uh, fix this old stuff plus tons of more projects that I still have yet to work on and that stuff underneath there it's just everywhere now the Marantz stereo model 22 I gotta get working stereo parts not working but uh, there we go IFR 1200 Super S. Might have to build me another shelving like this to put all the test equipment on. That'll be the next project. But anyway, quick shack tour, filing cabinet. Got another flat screen TV there I was going to play with, see if I can get it to work right one of these times. But that's how I spent my four day weekend building this. And the best thing is that I've got room in the back to get to all the cabling and everything. I decided I wasn't going to shove it up all the way against the wall. I wanted to be able to get in behind and do my stuff so I can get back in here, do everything here. Got my power strip there. Got another power strip up there that has an EMI filter, which really, really helps on cutting down some of the noise and the power lines going into these radios it makes a heck of a difference it quieted them down a lot you know you don't you can't hear the uh, air conditioner kick on anymore because you used to get that noise when you do that not anymore it's all gone works great but yeah there we go there's our main station fun times see you on the flip side